Hello everyone, my name is Mario Pereira and I'm here to present you our work on Camelier, a deductive verification tool for a camel. This is joint work with Antonio Ravara, also affiliated with Nova Links, the computer science lab of Nova School of Science and Technology at Portugal. So let me start this presentation by giving you a quick recap about the history of uh, Camelier. Camelier has been uh, publicly or officially presented at this year's uh, CAF with the publication uh, as a tool paper with the same name uh, as this uh, presentation here and it has also been presented as a tutorial on uh, Sunday, an ICFP tutorial so if you missed the tutorial, no worries this presentation will be a sort of uh, shorter version of the, the this same uh, tutorial okay, so Let's start this uh, presentation by looking at uh, nowadays research on deductive verification. And so one can actually say that it has been quite successfully applied uh, for the verification of programs written in imperative languages. And one can cite a number of different research uh, tools like uh, Boogie, Daphne, Verifast, Pharmacy, Verkcourse, uh, and so on, which are used to verify imperative programs. But what is somehow surprising is that deductive verification has been seldom applied to the functional world. Uh, so let's pick OCaml, for instance, as an element of the functional family. OCaml, for, the, for most of the time, it features uh, a clear syntax. It has a well-defined execution model, or in other words, a, well, a simple and well-defined operational semantics. And it's uh, a multi-paradigm language, which means that one can very easily uh, write concise, efficient, and type-safe code. Also, OCaml is the language of choice to implement software where safety and security are of utmost importance. For instance, uh, proof assistants, uh, software analyzers, um, SMT, SMT solvers, or out of a more academic world, uh, software like Mirage OS, the, um, Docker, uh, parts of the Messenger at Facebook, and more recently the Thesis blockchain. So it seems like OCaml code is a good target for deductive verification. And yet, there is no easy to use deductive verification that tackles code uh, written directly in OCaml. Uh, the two options nowadays would be to uh, write the code in a proof-aware language and then extract it, which means that one would need to rewrite entire code bases just for the sake of uh, formal verification, or turn into the use of an interactive tool, which is hardly the choice for the regular programmer. So, our big goal is to build a deductive verification tool that OCaml programmers can really use. So, what do we need, what are the main ingredients that we need, and where should we go in order to achieve this goal? So, first and foremost, we need a specification language for OCaml, uh, we, in order to annotate code. Then we need a VCGen to compute verification conditions from uh, the input annotated program. And finally, since we are targeting uh, automated verification, we need SMT solvers to be able to discharge these generated verification conditions. And so, this is how the Camelier project is born. Camelier is a two-years project founded by an individual Marie Curie Fellowship, and our main target, our big, big goal, is to build the first automated tool for the verification of OCaml programs. And so far, up to this point, we uh, need to, or we have employed two main ingredients. First, we are using Gospel, the recently proposed generic OCaml specification language in order to attach specification elements to OCaml implementations, and then we are translating our uh, annotated OCaml code into the Y3 verification framework in order to conduct deductive proofs. So, very briefly, let me give you some details about the Gospel specification language. So, Gospel was designed to be an expressive specification language where user writes uh, its uh, specification in a sort of extension of first-order uh, 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 logic. Uh, 
Okay, so it's uh, mainly first order logic extended with algebraic data types, recursive um, definitions, and a flavor of high order uh, um, logic. I'll give you a, a little bit more of details in a couple of minutes. It is a concise specification language, which is an improvement over uh, directly using separation logic. Very importantly, Gospel is not tied to any particular verification tool, and we have also took care to provide the formal semantics to Gospel via a translation into separation logic. If you are interested and want to uh, and want more details, please check out our paper uh, uh, that was presented on uh, Symposium Formal Methods in 2019. Okay, so in practice. Gospel, or we hope that Gospel feels natural to OCaml programmers, mainly because Gospel terms are written in a subset of the OCaml language itself, plus the use of quantifiers. In order to treat uh, Gospel elements, we use uh, on, uh, on, the, um, on the background OCaml attributes and the PPX lib uh, technology. So, for instance, this is an example uh, of a function, uh, the empty function, that is annotated with um, some gospel uh, elements. <coughs> For instance, here we say that this function empty returns a new value of type t, which we call r, which has size 0, so imagine that we have a, a, a logical function called size, and we say that for all element x, its occurrence inside the new data structure is equal to zero. Gospel is a, um, a collaborative development with contributions by myself, Jean-Christophe Filiatre, Claudio Lorenzo and Clément Pascuto. I provide you below the GitHub link for the uh, public development. Okay, so now uh, let's continue this talk with a, a more precise focus on the Camelier tool itself. So. Uh, first and foremost, I'll describe the architecture of the tool itself. Then I'll provide details about translating OCaml annotated code into the YML language, which is the language of the Y3 uh, verification framework. And I uh, will conclude providing some uh, closing remarks and future work perspectives. Okay, so from a, a very high level point of view, how does Camelier work? So in this, in this diagram, on the left hand side we can see the OCaml dimension and on the right hand side we can see the Y3 dimension. And what is very important here is that the full boxes represent what the programmer must write by hand and the dashed boxes represent what is automatically translated. So what is clear from this diagram is that when using Camelier the programmer is always focusing on OCaml code whether it is uh, .ml uh, files, OCaml implementations, or .mly files, OCaml interface files. All right? And the verification or the pro uh, proof part, which corresponds to the Y3 dimension, is always, always automatically translated by the Camelier tool. So if we zoom in on this uh, translation part, what we are proposing is in practice in practice is that instead of using Y3 as of today, which means that one would need to write uh, an implementation, an algorithm, a data structure and so on, or so on uh, directly on YML, the verification and programming language of Y3, do the proof and then rely on the Y3 extraction machinery in order to get correct by construction executable code, which once again means that uh, one would have to write entire uh, code base is just for the sake of verification. Now, with Camelier, what we are proposing is that the programmer writes or focus on the OCaml implementation, annotates it, it's, annotates it, it with uh, gospel elements, and then the Camelier tool enters the scene via this uh, automatic translation. But before, we use the PPX lib in order to recover uh, an OCaml AST. And so this uh, OCaml AST is uh, automatically translated into a corresponding or an equivalent program written in YML. And when we get to that point, now out of the box, we can use any tool available on the Y3 uh, toolset. In particular, 
we are able to interface with many different SMT solvers, but also when needed with interactive proof assistants like COC. So, so now that we get to this point, let me show you a demo of how Camelier works in practice for the verification of a small OCaml program. So, imagine that you are given the following task. Find the maximum element of an array of integer values. So that this one uh, is an, it seems like an easy task, but instead of using the more traditional approach of scanning the whole array from left to right, now we are going to do in a different way, and we are going to use two references. Let's call them X and Y. And X starts at the very beginning, or points at the verb to the very beginning of the array, and Y points to the last element of the array. And so. The idea is the following. Now we have these two references and we are either going to increment or decrement, we are going to increment x or decrement y. And how should we do, do, do that? So when x or the value pointed by x is uh, smaller or equal to the element pointed by y, we increment x. So this is y. In the first step, x now is now pointing to 10. Okay, so when now on the second uh, iteration, um, the second step, x is also going to be incremented, okay, because it's pointing to 10 and y is pointing to 13. All right, so now x is pointing to 73. So at this point, or when it comes to this, uh, to this uh, case, so now we are going to decrement y, okay, and now once again we need to decrement why? Because it's pointing to minus 7 and x is pointing to 73. And actually we are, we are going to decrement y several number of times. Okay, so decrement and now it points to 42. And at the very last iteration, y is pointing to minus 1 and x is still pointing to 73. So y decrements and at this point the function returns the value of either x or y, which corresponds to the maximum element within the array. Well, this uh, simple um, function has a very straightforward implementation in, as an OCaml uh, program. All right, so we, here we use a, a while loop to traverse the array using the two uh, references X and Y. The array here is called A. And so other than the OCaml implementation itself, one can very easily spot specification elements in the form of gospel comments. Okay, so inside the while loop, we can see the loop variant, which uh, ensures loop termination, but also loop invariant, which is a condition that must hold uh, throughout every iteration of this uh, loop. So the first clause in the invariant list simply states that we are correctly using um, references x, x and y. So x is always less or equal to um, y, and y uh, can never uh, go uh, beyond the limits of the of the array. Of course. So the second clause is a little bit more uh, interesting. It says that every element either on the left of x or on the uh, right hand side of y. So for each of these elements, either that element is uh, uh, smaller or equal to the element pointed by y, or is uh, smaller or equal to the element pointed by x. Okay, And so why this uh, invariant um, is, is enough then to prove soundness of the, of the function is that uh, by the end, of the loop uh, iteration, we know that x and y are pointing to the same value. So uh, we have scanned all the uh, all the arrays. So every element of on the left hand side of the final uh, value of x is smaller uh, to this to this element, and every uh, other element on the right hand side is also smaller or equal to the element pointed by x and y. <coughs> also, we can. Uh, attach a precondition to the max function, in this case that this function um, <clears throat> uh, only works for non-empty arrays, this is a precondition, right? And so 
as a post condition, we uh, assert that the result R is within bounds of the array, and of course the maximum property is that every other element in, within the array is less or equal to the returned element. So, in order to use Camelier to conduct the proof uh, that this implementation adheres to the specification, it is as simple as writing Camelier followed by the name of the OCaml file. So, once we do this, we are immediately presented with the Y3 integrated development environment. On the left hand side, we have our proof tree. On the right hand side, we have the code. Okay, so once I click here, I can see the original implementation, right? And if I choose the task tab, I can see what Y3 has generated as a verification condition. For, uh, for proving the, the, the correct and the soundness of this, of this uh, max function. All right? So this is quite a big formula. So first, before attempting to proving it, I'm going to use a strategy or a transformation of Y3, which is called split VC, which is going to uh, split, as the name says, my um, verification condition into smaller ones. And for now, these are much simpler ones. For instance, this one stays loop invariant initialization. This one is for safety. I mean, every index in, is within array bounds. And for instance, loop, loop preservation and the post conditions, which are much simpler now. So if I choose this node here and I call my favorite SMT solver, for instance, alter goal. So everything is green, so which means that author Go was able to discharge each and every one of the generated verification conditions for this function. In other words, the specification adheres to the implementation. All right, so is it really necessary to always use the uh, Y3 integrated development environment for uh, such proofs? Well, the answer is that actually Camelier provides us with a batch mode all right and once you, you uh, choose to use the best mode you only need to specify the prover that you want to uh, use to try to discharge every verification condition so in this case i'm also going to use the alter go smt solver and once i press enter you see that there is a bunch of valid uh, printed in green so it means that each and every verification condition is automatically discharged by uh, uh, alter go. So in in uh, the background, the batch mode is always splitting automatically for you. So this is also another way to use Camelier when you do not really want to to use the uh, Y3 integrated development environment, for instance, for simpler proofs and for simpler specification. Okay, so. Continuing with our uh, presentation, now that I've shown you how Camelier works in practice, let me give you more details about how we are translating OCaml into IML. So, uh, a couple of words about the subset of OCaml that we are currently targeting. We are currently uh, supporting what one can call core OCaml, which roughly corresponds to Camelite, plus support for functors. So in particular, this means that we are not supporting the objective layer of the language, neither some more type-oriented features like GDTs or polymorphic variants. We also have a limited support for high-order functions. This is a, a, a limitation or a constraint imposed by both a Gospel and Y3, and the, in particular this means that we do not support or we are not able to prove and give specification to higher order effectful functions, only those that do not perform effects. And also we have limited support for mutability. Now this is a constraint imposed by the Y3 verification framework. Okay, and in particular this means that we are not able to um, deal with mutual, mutual uh, sorry, mutual recursive data structures because uh, Y3 does not uh, or cannot statically uh, know every uh, possible aliasing within the, um, the program because Y3 does not feature any particular memory model. Our translation is defined as a set of inference rules, but today I'm going to give you an overview of this translation via a couple of examples. Okay, so the first one is a very simple 
even odd function, which are two uh, mutually recursive uh, functions. Okay, and so the gospel elements are written in those special commands that we have seen before. And so the first step that Camille uh, is going to do is to translate these commands into proper uh, OCaml attributes. Okay, and so now this is a valid OCaml uh, program, which can be very easily translated into uh, YML counterpart. Well, in this case, now what is what is important to, no to note is that the specification elements are now part of the implementation itself. Also, it is very important to note that let rec on uh, YML is limited to uh, functions. So if you try to build, for instance, a recursive list using let rec, a camel here will complain. Now, moving on to how we deal with um, cycles, or for instance, while, while loops. In this case, we write the invariant also as a gospel comment, but now the, the, the generated attribute uh, changes uh, a little bit of the location of the, the comments, so now it is attached to, or properly attached to the while uh, keyword. But now, when we get to this part, it is also very easy to uh, produce uh, an equivalent YML uh, code. Okay, so the next feature is how one can build logic and ghost functions. For instance, the Fibonacci implementation, textbook implementation, is not very efficient, right? Because of repeated computation. But it's very, very uh, interesting as a specification function or one that we can use inside other specification elements. For instance, we can use fib inside the post condition of the fib main function, right? So what I need to do is I need to attach a logic attribute to this function and I also say that this is a ghost function. So it should be erased before compilation because it has no uh, real purpose for executable code. Also, the feebox function here, the first argument is only an auxiliary argument in order to uh, make the proof and the specification task easier. So it, all, it can also be erased before compilation. All right. So the, this can also be very easily translated into, um, <clears throat> into YML. But now we see that the ghost uh, and function keywords are used. Function is the keyword uh, of YML that states that the fib function can be used, sorry, both in program and as well as specification. Now, imagine that we uh, <coughs> we want to uh, declare a type of always lists that are always non-empty. So what we do, we create a new record type. We call it non-empty list, and we attach an invariant, an invariant type, a type invariant that says that a self field always stores a non-empty list and now we can uh, build a function head where the first branch of the pattern matching always asserts to false right and so luckily enough on the yml uh, side we have the absurd construction which has the exact same semantic as the assert false construction which is already treated in a special way by the ocaml type checker also typed invariants are uh, readily supported by the YML language. Okay, so now more interesting is how we deal with the module language of OCaml versus the module language of Y3. In particular, the Y3 module language is not as expressive as the uh, OCaml one. So imagine that we have the sub-module mult inside a larger development uh, uh, in, within a, uh, an OCaml file, we are now going to translate this into a scope on the YML side. And scopes are for namespace management only and should not be confused with some modules. There is no such thing as a submodule inside Y3. Okay, but even more interesting is how we deal with functors because there is no syntactic support for functors on the YML side. So imagine that we have this uh, uh, subset of an implementation of leftist heaps that we picked off the OCaml uh, containers library. Okay, so in this case, what you are going to do is that the, the functor make is going to be turned into a scope 
and the, the argument of the functor will be a nested scope with the same name, E. And so, after defining E, we can conduct the proof or the code is exactly the same as before. And this rotation scheme is, is exactly the dual of the uh, extraction mechanism of Y3, which means that if you want to extract functors from a Y3 implementation, you would have to write your code in the first way, like this. Okay, so let me conclude this presentation. So up until now, we have been able to verify an interesting uh, number of case studies with Camelier. Most of the proofs are fully uh, automa automatic and some need uh, lightweight interactive uh, steps which are very easy to perform um, within the Y3 integrated development environment. <coughs> we have put an effort to verify programs of different natures ranging from um, <coughs> ephemeral data structures, mathematical computations, uh, sorting and searching algorithms, high order implementations and so on and so on. Uh, but up until this point, the, more, the most interesting example is the union find implementation because it features a very nice uh, specification and implementation, but it's a fully uh, automatic proof. And the larger development is a small compiler of arithmetic expressions into a stack machine. Okay, so up until this point, we have built a deductive verification tool for a representative subset of Okamo. And we are very happy and believe that this is a usable tool to verify uh, realistic uh, case studies as shown by the number of uh, case studies that we have been able to verify so far. In the future, we would like to be uh, able to produce a proof of correctness from OCaml into YML, one that shows semantic preservation. And we would like to uh, augment our uh, class of OCaml programs that we are able to uh, verify. As a first step for simpler heat manipulating programs will feature a translation into the Viper uh, intermediate verification language. And for high order effectful programs we'll go into uh, translation into the CFML tool. And the big question that we pose to ourselves at this moment is that is Camelia ready for even larger case studies? We believe so, and we have a, a number of different projects running now with very promising uh, results. So I thank you very much for your attention and give you with the GitHub link for uh, to, to the public development. Uh, and I also thank you Horizon 2020 and all the links for financial support. So thank you very much for your attention.